In this video, I'm going to show you 20 essential settings that you should change on your iPad right now. Find the Files app. The Files app is a file management system where you can see all your files instead of hunting for them across different apps. This is what it looks like. There's the icon for it. It lets you manage files not only stored in Apple's iCloud drive, but also third-party cloud services like Dropbox. You need to search for and download the Files app from the App Store. So from the App Store, just search for Files. And download the Files app. Disable calls on your iPad. If you've got an iPhone, you can also take calls on your iPad, which can be annoying if you're watching a video or playing a game or reading a newspaper online. To turn off this feature, go to Settings, FaceTime, and then toggle the switch to turn off calls from iPhone. Disable auto brightness. You need to control the level of brightness that your iPad displays. Now, personally, I like a bright screen, not something that's so dim that I can't easily see what's on the screen. And surprisingly, a bright screen does not drain your battery. So go to Settings, General, Accessibility, Display Accommodations. You'll see the toggle for auto brightness. So turn it off. To adjust your brightness manually, you can do it two ways. You can either go to display and brightness in the settings and adjust it by toggling it there. Or what's quicker is from the control center, you've got the brightness widget and you can adjust it there much quicker. Enable find my iPad. Now, even though it's an iPad, it still says find iPhone, but that's the the icon for it. iPads don't tend to go missing as often as iPhones, but loss and theft can happen. That's why it's essential to make sure that the Find My iPad option is enabled. Go to Settings, then you need to then iCloud, which is being moved in iOS 11 to the top where your account is. iCloud, and then scroll down to Find My iPad and make sure that it's turned on. At the same time, consider enabling Send Last Location, which will automatically transmit to iCloud the iPad's current location when, when the battery is critically low. Some privacy settings. Disable significant locations and protect your privacy. Significant locations was previously called frequent locations, and it keeps track of all places you've recently visited. This setting is intended to help you with personalized location-related data for Maps and other Apple apps. To turn it off, go to Settings, Location Services, and then down the bottom, System Services. You may need to enter your passcode, Touch ID, or Face ID to authenticate yourself. Touch that, I have to authenticate myself, so I'm using Touch ID and then turn off significant locations. Limit ad tracking. Some advertisements you receive within apps may seem similar to something you've just been reading about or a game you've just started playing. This is because you've got ad tracking on your iPad. And if you don't want to be shown ads based on your own data, turn this off. So into settings, privacy, at the bottom, advertising, and turn off limit ad tracking. The Reset Advertising Identifier can also tap that and reset it. If you're concerned about having your personal usage habits tracked by apps and advertisers, this is the convenient button you can now use to reset that identifier. It essentially makes you appear like you're a new user. Disable Share iPad Analytics. You can help Apple improve its products and services by letting the company analyze their iCloud data. As much as you may trust Apple, you should know there's a simple way to stop sharing your iCloud Analytics data. So go to Settings, and back into Privacy, and Analytics at the bottom there. Turn off Share iPad Analytics to stop sending any data back to Apple. Background App Refresh. This feature was introduced with iOS 7, and it lets third-party apps go out and pull new messages, headlines, status messages, from the internet, even while they're not actively running on your screen. And of course, all those apps busily refreshing themselves can put a dent in your battery. 
particularly if you're not keeping an eye on what apps are doing the refreshing. Go to Settings, General, Background App Refresh. And if there's any app that you don't want to refresh itself in the background, just flip the appropriate switch to off. So I don't particularly want Mug Life to be refreshing itself in the background, so I'm going to turn it off. At the same time, select whether you want the refreshing to be done on Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi and mobile data, or you don't want it done at all, you can turn it off completely, that whole feature. Enable speak selection. Let Siri read to you. One accessibility feature that you should use is centered around speech, specifically reading selected text back to you. So open the settings app and into general, accessibility, locate speech and it's in the vision and then turn speak selection on. You can also adjust how fast you want the text read to you by adjusting the speaking rate. Slower go to the left to the turtle, faster to the right to the hair. You can select the voice, so if you could, you've got all sorts of accents there and a variety within the language. So for English, you've got US English, Australian English, Irish English, etc. And if you want the content to be highlighted as it's read to you, turn highlight content on. And if you have difficult words or phrases that are continually misread, you can add those in pronunciations. So how it works is you select text from a web page, if I or highlight some text. When I do that, I now get the option for it to speak. So tapping speak. And as it's speaking, it's being highlighted. Add more fingers to Touch ID. All the newer iPads incorporate Touch ID, which is the fingerprint sensor that makes fast and easy lock screen security. And when you first set up your tablet, you probably only train Touch ID to recognize one of your fingers. But sometimes you want to use more fingers, like your thumb. iOS 11 can accommodate up to five fingers. So to add more fingers, go to Settings, and Touch ID and Passcode. Put in your passcode. Tap Add a Fingerprint. And then place your finger, the one you want to use, on the Home button repeatedly. And then adjust your grip. And once it's got your fingerprint, you can tap Continue, and now you've got a fifth fingerprint. And if you want to replace it, just tap a finger and delete that fingerprint. Use Touch ID to enable the App Store and iTunes purchases. Integrating Touch ID authentication with iTunes and the App Store allows you now to use your fingerprint as proof of your identity. So into settings, Touch ID and passcode, authenticate yourself with your passcode, and then turn on iTunes and App Store. So go into the App Store and find an app you'd like to purchase or download and tap the Get. And instead of typing in your password, you can now use Touch ID to install it for you. Disable auto capitalization. Fault Apple enables auto capitalization on the iPad, which means that when you're composing a message or an email, the first letter of every sentence is automatically set to a capital letter. So if I was writing a, a, a note, the first letter is a capital letter. But if I don't want that to occur, I have to change the setting or manually change that to a lowercase letter. So one of the first things I do is turn off auto capitalization because I want to have more control and be able to manually choose between having a character in uppercase or lowercase. So to change it, go to settings, general, keyboard, and turn auto capitalization off. Disable keyboard clicks. By default, the iPad keyboard makes a clicking noise every time you press a key. And these clicks on your iPad can be annoying, especially to those around you. So to turn it off, go to settings, into sounds, and turn off keyboard clicks. Enable dictation. 
You don't need an internet connection to be able to dictate your messages, your notes or your emails on the iPad. To use the dictation feature, you need to turn it on. So back to settings, general, keyboard and enable dictation, turn it on. So next time you want to create a note, a message or an email, so let's just test it on here. Tap the microphone. Today it is Sunday and it is raining heavily. Now if you want punctuation you have to read that into your dictation. Today is Sunday, comma, and it is raining heavily, full stop. Or well, how much battery do you have? If you want to know exactly how much battery life you've got left, by default the iPad only shows you a small gauge, which is not super informative. So tap settings, battery, and turn on battery percentage. iPads have got big screens, so why not make text easier to read? You can do that by adjusting the size of the system font. So go to settings, display and brightness, text size. Any app that supports dynamic type will adjust to this reading size. Third party apps it won't make any difference to. So if you look on the left hand side at the, the settings text, if I move that bigger, it becomes much easier to read, but then every app that supports this type of type will also be that large. But it's certainly better than having it really tiny. Depends on you, it depends on your eyesight. You can also support readability by enabling the bold text option. So if the text is too thin, try the bold setting. So tap settings, display and brightness and bold text and turn that on. As soon as you do that, your iPad's going to restart. But once it restarts, everything from will look thicker and darker and be easier to see. It's an accessibility option. Make the screen stay on longer. Once you stop tapping on, on your iPad, its display will shut off and lock itself after a brief period of time. And generally that's just a minute, which is the default. It's a security feature because a locked device will require your passcode to unlock, which keeps your data safe if you happen to lose your iPad. But if it's locking itself too quickly, there's a way to make it stay on a little longer. So go to settings, display and brightness, and auto lock. I've set mine to five minutes because I think that's enough time for me to be working on it, to be able to move away for a couple of minutes and not have to keep on entering my passcode all the time. Just tap in the menu and they're the options you have for changing the auto lock feature. Never is not recommended because it's never going to go to sleep. It's never going to lock itself. A big security risk. So customize it how you'd like it from 2 minutes to 15. Disable the control center from the lock screen. While the control center is very useful, it might not be the best thing to have enabled on the lock screen. We've all left our iPad out in places where someone might be able to get a hold of it and you don't want anyone messing around with your settings. So this phone is in lock screen at the moment, but I can still get to the control center by swiping up. To disable that, go into settings, touch ID and passcode, authenticate yourself, with your passcode, and then in the allow access when locked section, turn off control center. So now when my iPad is locked and I swipe up, which I'm doing now, I can't get any control center. Enable do not disturb. It's great that people can reach you 24 seven, but there are times when you just don't want to be disturbed by notifications or someone loving your dog picture on Instagram. So before going to bed or you might be going into a meeting or something, turn on the iPad's one tap do not disturb mode. Open control center and just tap the moon and that turns it on instantly. Of course you need to automate the do not disturb mode. So in settings, do not disturb. On my iPad, do not disturb will automatically come on at 10 p.m. and turn itself off at 7 a.m. If I want to adjust that, I just tap that and I can change the, the times from when it starts to when it stops. You can also set exceptions so you can allow calls or in this case, because it's not a phone, uh, messages, 
emails from family. And in order to have a group, you need to have set that up in the Contacts app. So in this video, I showed you the 20 essential settings that you should change right now.